Uh, a QB that has had a lot of this fervor, I would say a lot of people getting excited for, is our first QB of the day, Justin Fields. Dynasty League Football July startup ADP was QB8. The QB5 in points per game with 19.7 in 2022. This offseason, the Bears trade for DJ Moore. They're investing in the offensive line. They're getting Darnell Mooney back. Uh, another year of Chase Claypool with the team. There's a lot of things coming together, improving the run game, bringing people in there. Like things are happening around there. But it's everyone ha- does have to recognize that while the potential is there for Justin Fields' passing ability, we haven't quite seen it yet. There are inspiring things. Like he was very good in the red zone, had a high touchdown percentage. Uh, but we have to recognize uh, that he does need to improve his passing. And we can't always, like, I expect him to be a very good runner for the majority of his NFL career, but we do we can't expect the type of rushing season he had last year, year in and year out, right? So we need a little bit more of that passing production, I think. But the question is now is, like, with this ADP, ADP coming up, QB8 and Superflex, Leo, are we into trying to buy at that price? Is that already too high? How do we approach it? So I guess, you know, in your introduction, you talk about two, you you made a comment where you say the two things that are absolute are death taxes. And then you mentioned a draft class. And I I think the, one of the things that's absolute is Newton's third law, right? For every action, there is an equal opposite reaction. And I think that's true with fields. When we talk about how dynamic and how uh, unbelievably efficient he was as a runner last year, if now you want him or you're expecting him, or you're believing that he's going to take the Jalen Hurts trajectory, and he's going to improve his passing with uh, the improvements in the offensive line that you mentioned, with the improvement in the weapons, uh, just another year of maturity and and time under center and in the pocket. But the bottom line is if one is going to improve, one has to decrease. And to me, the general consensus, at least the feeling I get, and maybe – the live draft that I went to in Scott Fishbowl isn't the right microcosm for this, but the hype around fields was immense in the conversations I was having there. To me, I'm going to let this breathe. We talked about being patient. I'm rooting for the guy. I would love to see him take a Jalen Hurts trajectory. I just don't see it happen because they, I mean, they bottom line, they ran the third, they were third from the bottom and plays run. They just don't run that many plays. And even if they improve um, and they get to the league average, which is is another extra 75 plays per game, even if his efficiency gets them to that plateau, that's still only 75 more offensive plays to deal with over the course of the year. What does that end up looking like from a productivity standpoint? From a dynasty point of view, I'm going to let the dust settle and I'm going to let people be disappointed. And the fact that he doesn't take that, but he's still going to be efficient. I think he's still going to do well. They're just expecting Jalen Hurts like passing and running statistics like he had last year. And I just don't think you can have both of them simultaneously. And I think there's going to be a level of disappointment. So I like him. I would be looking to buy, but I wouldn't be looking to buy until the end of the 2023 season when there's a level of disappointment instead of this hype that's surrounding him now. I think the comparison to Jalen Hurts is a really interesting one and one that gets made on Twitter, you know, quite often. Uh, but there's big differences between those teams and the, the, what was around these QBs, right? Like A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, Miles Sanders, Dallas got it like way different. And the offensive, best offensive line football, way different than what's going on in Chicago. I think those kinds of expectations are really lofty and really unwarranted for Justin Fields going into this next year. Um, Skyler, I have found that there's just like, the little bit of concern, little bit of worry over what happens if Chicago is really bad again and they don't win games. What happens to Justin Fields' future? Because no matter what he's doing for us for fantasy, if the team is not winning, Chicago could look at another direction. We don't really know what happens there. So I, fi- I find myself just kinds of hands off. He's kind of last in a tier for me, um, and I just haven't like invested in, in this offseason. I'm not buying – uh, I haven't been in a spot in a startup this offseason where I I drafted him. Um, what do you think? Yeah, well, to your first point here with players 
Justin Fields did just enough last year, I think, to buy you a little bit more time. I don't think even if Chicago has a poor season, that Justin Fields is suddenly pushed out and won't be a starting quarterback in the NFL. I think he's just good enough to buy himself time. But after that, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at the box scores and see that Justin Fields finished inside the top 10 quarterbacks every single week after week six, other than the, the matchup against Buffalo. And that obviously leads to the hype that Leo was talking about here, where I just don't see how you buy Justin Fields. Really, that's it right now. If we're strictly talking buy, sell, I don't understand how you buy Justin Fields. He's he's already going as, yes, that quarterback 7-8 means he's a top 8 or 9 super flex startup pick. That's how high you're going. And for me, unless you become Jalen Hurts, which is quite a leap, you don't get a way to go up in value, really, to go down from here. I don't see how you how you buy the player. I do like Justin Fields. I think in redraft, he's a player to absolutely keep your eye on where he goes in drafts. It could be with what we saw at the end of last year. He could legitimately be that league winning type of player, even a one quarterback formats. But for dynasty, even a Lamar Jackson who took a leap, just like we saw with, with Jalen Hurts last year that got him up to as a top three dynasty quarterback. There've been buy windows since that 2019 season where Lamar Jackson, even this off season where you get him at quarterback eight or nine, so even if uh, Justin Fields comes out and proves everybody will write in the hype streets or wrong in the, the main media and jumps up as a top three dynasty quarterback or top four, top five, I still think there's going to be lulls in the career to points where you will be able to buy back in at this exact same price. So I agree with Leo, let the dust settle. I don't, I just don't understand how you're buying in on Justin Fields right now. The buy window was last year when at this point in the offseason, him and Trevor Lawrence were going in the mid third round of Superflex startup jazz. That's fantastic. I think that's more the lesson here too, especially with young players, where if you if you were in on the player as a rookie, as people were on Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence is the 101, the 102 in these rookie drafts. When they disappoint as a rookie because they come into terrible situations, that's why they're high, high draft picks. And then everyone is so disappointed. That might create a window to come in and buy. You had it with Lamar. You had it with Josh, with Josh Allen. And that's how I would just echo that to tell people to focus on that for the next round of guys. If you're in on Anthony Richardson, Bryce Young, CJ Shad right now, Wait until all of them have very rough situations. Wait until next off season and see where they land. Because if they settle into that third, fourth round, you might have the same little bit of a buy window that you had on Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence last year. Not that I think those three guys are, I didn't like those three guys as much as I like Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. But in general, I think that that applies. Why and I had a startup last season. We got Justin Fields in the third round, one around the same time. I got both Justin and Trevor Lawrence in the third round. It, that's just, that's my takeaway here. I don't know how you buy at this point, but it's a good study to apply to next year and maybe years, you know, after that. I, I do want to say that, like, I'm still way into Justin Fields for this year. It's just like the kind of a little bit of worry for the future that I, that's why I'm not really trying to buy or invest in now. That also doesn't mean I'm selling at all. I mean, like you said, this season, I think the po points, your lineup, he's going to be a big help. You like, you look at, uh, underdog fantasy where you sign up our, with our code JDB, you get a first time deposit match up to hundred dollars. He's being drafted as the QB five in round four. Uh, those are lofty expectations, right? That's where people think he should be drafted. And those are the expectations they're putting onto him for this year. And honestly, I think that's a reasonable thing to do for this season. It's just what happens with Chicago and him after this year. There's a little bit of worry. Um, Leo, real quick, before we move on, I want to do a quick this or that for Justin Fields with you. Would you rather have Justin Fields or Deshaun Watson? It, it, okay, so for, I would rather have Justin Fields. And, and the reason being is just because I don't necessarily think, as I said earlier, the, the this or that, right? You're, he's going to, Improve in passing, I think. His running is not going to be quite as efficient. He's still going to be productive. I like his runway a lot longer, um, a lot more productive over the next – and we're talking dynasty. So for the next, you know, two to five years, I would much rather have Justin Fields. And and, and because it's also a better bargaining chip because I think the running Justin Fields, it's always better to have the player that's in demand than the player who has some baggage and isn't maybe as just as productive, but it's all about perceived value. And so give me Justin Fields and and Good let's point. see how things go. And I'll I'll either move him for top dollar or I'll keep him and build my, you know, build my super flex team around him. 
Fields or Lawrence? I'd take Lawrence. Uh, I just think um, he's, I love his situation. I love the coaching staff that's around him. Uh, the pieces that are around him, uh, Ridley is going to be, um, demonstrative this year, I think playing with him. And, um, I just think that it's just a better all around situation in Jacksonville, more cohesion, consistency. And I think just from a prolific passing perspective, I think Lawrence is the guy to own. Yeah, that's how we have it in our uh, JWB consensus rankings. Lawrence Fields, Deshaun Watson. So I just wanted to get a little temp check on that from you.